Adapted from Larry McMurtry's Horseman Pass By, HUD tells the story of the visceral conflict between Homer Bannon, a hardworking, honest Texas rancher, and HUD, his alcoholic, arrogant, and highly destructive son. Smack dab in the middle of the two men is HUD's orphan nephew Lonnie, a naive and very impressionable young man who looks up to both Homer and HUD. As the family's cattle ranch is threatened by an outbreak of foot and mouth disease, family tensions rise, truths come out, and the Bannons are tested to the very limit. HUD is a dark, unflinching, difficult masterwork for Martin Ritt, and arguably the director's most accomplished film. It's interesting how HUD and Lucchino Visconti's The Leopard were released in the same year given the similarities in the themes explored. Both films are about the wealthy old guard wrestling with the idea of the future, but more specifically, the notion of transitioning into something. It doesn't really matter if what's to come is better or worse, it matters only that it's different. And that lingering inevitability births feelings of fear and inadequacy. Visconti's film is grand, colorful, expansive. It's an epic that runs over three hours long and prides itself on a sophisticated palette. Martin Ritt's HUD is no less sophisticated, but it's presented in a completely different light. The site here is the Old West, or the death of it, something that happens symbolically throughout, and the sentiment is the uncertainty that the future will be taken care of, that it will be left in good, responsible hands. The two people butting heads are father and son, both remarkably played by Melvin Douglas and Paul Newman. They've had a massive falling out that led to complex and tenuous family dynamics, and to make matters worse, their values and belief systems couldn't be further apart. On the one side, we have an ethical, moralistic, masculine way of doing business and running a family. On the other, there's the aggressively cynical, foul, self-hating, rebellious attitude they'll happily take the easy road if it means a higher payday. In HUD, the older generation seems to be more level-headed and kinder, even if less aware of the psychological ramifications of trauma. Despite how this might sound, HUD isn't necessarily conservative, both in thinking and politics. Instead, it presents a strong stance on purpose and attempts to extract meaning out of life, and that's where Lonnie, played brilliantly by Brandon DeWilde, comes in. What are you thinking about, Lonnie? Oh, I don't know. Just looking up ahead, I guess. You know, to what's coming. Lonnie tiptoes the line between two different schools of thought and life, discovering its reveries and pleasures, understanding what actually is good for him. In Lonnie lies a fundamental truth that there's a third option. There's always a third option. Lonnie needs to find his own way, and that means that he needs to make up his own mind and carve his own path no matter what his influences say or do. In the midst of so much masculinity, there's one person who seemingly lives free and independent, and that's the ever-seen-stealing Patricia Neal, here playing Alma, the housekeeper who's certain of herself and her position in life. Alma knows what she wants and how to get it. Now, this doesn't mean she's not affected by the family dynamics at play, and it certainly doesn't mean she doesn't feel things, or want things, or desires things in people. She simply goes about it her own way. Again, in HUD, carving your own path is viewed as total liberation. Throughout Ritt's film, there's an underlying tension and unspoken aggression that feels almost unbearable. There's a sense that an explosion is just around the corner, adding an element of danger to a story that theoretically has none. Not in any traditional sense, anyway. But it also feels like that explosion is necessary, as to unburden these repressed characters from their deep unhappiness. Not unrelated to these states of mind are the acts of eating or not eating. Food is ever present in the film and says a lot about who these characters are and their inner psyche at any given moment. HUD, for example, fluctuates between not wanting to eat anything to saying he's starving. In between those extremes, he drinks copious amounts of alcohol. This is a broken man who can't take pleasure in anything life has to offer that doesn't cause destruction or chaos. In turn, Lonnie and Alma can be seen eating or wanting to eat constantly. They still have a zest for life and want to partake in it any way they can. I don't believe it. You still eating bread? After I gave you steak and flour gravy and hominy and fried okra and onions and hot rolls? Well, it looked like a lot when we sat down, but it sure melted away. 
the family's patriarch, Homer, lies somewhere in the middle. He's lived too much to still be excited about the prospect of living, yet he also knows the importance of wanting to live. HUD can be at times a difficult watch, but nonetheless it's a gripping, highly rewarding one, in no small part thanks to Elmer Bernstein's evocative score and James Wong Howe's Oscar-winning photography. Both being flawless examples of geniuses at the top of their game, elevating every second of the film with their profound sense of artistry. Howe's photography, for instance, remains highly influential in the landmark achievement, capturing the many a time photographed Texas landscape in ways never quite seen before or since. In an interview with American cinematographer, Howe said, It is true that part of Texas is flat as a pancake, with not a tree in sight, and this is enough to discourage any cameraman. For example, for one important scene we elevated the camera crane so that when HUD pulled away in his car and moved down the long, receding ribbon of road, we were shooting down at a very low horizon line which accentuated the feeling of space and the vast land area. This became a motif and a symbol of the man's character. It is many small details like this that, when put together correctly, create visual impact and drama. Said visual impact was achieved in spades, as HUD remains one of the finest photographed films to ever come out of the studio system. Of course, let's also give credit where credit is due. Martin Ridd has to be one of the most underappreciated American filmmakers. Between HUD, The Spy Who Came In From The Cold, The Front, Paris Blues, The Molly Maguires, Edge of the City, The Long Hot Summer, and of course Norma Ray, he's built a fascinating, dynamic, multifaceted oeuvre that deserves to be rediscovered and reappreciated. Always interested in social issues and character-driven narratives, Ritt loved exploring the nuances and complexities of human beings, always with an eye towards decency. A deeply empathetic filmmaker, Ritt never had any qualms about pissing off certain people in order to make a point. He used his medium to talk about the things he believed in, the things that needed talking, and he did so by progressively deconstructing corrupting American myths. Film critic Emmanuel Levi said that HUD is a transitional film between the naive films of the early 60s and the more cynical ones later in the decade. Not only is Levi absolutely correct, but perhaps there's a case to be made that Ritt was ahead of the curve, being a new wave director years before the new wave officially kicked off. Maybe that's a conversation for another time. The fact remains, the only one that matters, that HUD is one of the greatest films to ever come out of Hollywood.